I would like to talk to you about the economy. Put simply, the economy is the flow of money around our society. Money that is spent purchasing goods and services. The more money that flows around our society, the higher the standard of living we enjoy. The economy is not a game of monopoly. Rather, the economy is a garden, and businesses are the fruit trees. Okay, great.、Um, so I think we're going to just kick it off into the session.、Um, but before I introduce our speakers,、um, I'd like to give a context as to you know, the entrepreneurship ecosystem. What does it mean? What does it look like?、Um, and ultimately, it will inform why we chose the speakers we chose、um, to kind of speak to it. So I'd like to simplify it into three pillars. Right? We've got a pillar of skills development or capacity building. We've got a pillar of risk capital、uh, or funding, and then market access or linkage. Right now, these are three important pillars that need to work in harmony. And unfortunately, what tends to happen is an entrepreneur will tell you, "No, I need money to start my business. I need I need to get a contract."、Um, then you then get to understand、uh, that's not that easy. So in my background,、um, many moons ago, I was in finance, and I actually sat on the other side of the table,、um, looking at funding applications for SMEs. Right? I actually hated the slot because I wanted to be part of the mergers and acquisitions of the corporate finance particular firm I was working for. But nonetheless, as fate would have it, I that's where I actually discovered my passion, and. I then learned a few things. This beautiful word that the banks like to throw around、um, called risk. I say it's beautiful because it's so abstract, right?、Um, so risk is abstract in that a bank needs to know that when I give you money, can you pay it back? Despite the cyclical recovery that we're seeing, the operating environment still remains fraught. Debt levels are too high, structural growth is too low. And inflation is missing the central bank's targets. But this cyclical recovery is an opportunity to reposition economies. It means that governments have to invest more, but it also means that businesses have to invest in higher productivity, whether that is in terms of the processes. But it also means they have to invest more in their labour force. Now、uh, the qu- bigger question is: What informs you or the bank the ability to pay back? Right. Do you have contracts? These contracts will then inform your sustainability, your cash flows. Can you project them long enough, right, in a way that can convince a bank that you can pay it back? The other element, which then speaks to your skills,、um, do you have the right skill sets to actually deliver on it? So, in other words, I could actually give you a business in a box, a McDonald's franchise, and you can still run it to the ground. Is the business model wrong? No. Do they have optics? Absolutely. But、are you the right person to run the business? Maybe not.、Right? And how do you spread and mitigate against that risk?、And、this one speaks around you know, the, the, the skills or the business capacity of a business.、Um, so these are the things I'd like us to really understand. We will be having the NYDA on the panel, presented by Hotzo.、Um, Hotzo, if you don't mind coming up and giving a round of applause. Uh, NYDA has a, a big role to play,、uh, also representing the funding institution responsible for youth development、um, and ultimately funding young entrepreneurs.、Uh, we、we'll、also have SAB、um, slash AB Inbev, represented by Mr. Hossi 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 or Hossi, sorry, who's the regional affairs director for SAB. If you don't mind coming up, sir. Uh, and what's really interesting about you know, SAB,、um, one, it's a great opportunity to understand the opportunities for an entrepreneur, but also they've done some amazing work,、um, being a, a huge player、uh, in the industry, not just in brewery and agriculture. In fact, they're quite passionate around entrepreneurship as well. That's why we invited them just to get a bigger sense of what are they doing.、Um, we'll get to understand from our speakers some of the challenges they are facing. Tell the entrepreneurs that they are engaging with,、um, and then yeah, it's going to be a dialogue.、Um, if there are questions, I'd like to have them towards the end. And I'll 
sound guy and I stand in the whole spot. Um, I would like to get them to the end to just get a better understanding of you know, what they do um, and maybe you've got some specific questions that relate to your business or just out of you know, information gathering as well, um, what you'd like to learn from them. I think maybe we can start with you put uh, around, maybe let's start with, you know, what is NYPA? What's been your role um, in society so far? Um, obviously, we understand you know, the past two years um, through COVID, I say two years, because my head is ready in 2022. Um, but through COVID, the country has been impacted quite severely. Um, naturally, we've seen now a, the high numbers of high unemployment, predominantly impacted the youth. I mean, South Africa has majority young people in its population, so naturally, youth are most impacted. Um, and there's a huge, huge desperate need to see you know, entrepreneurs evolving. There's a huge desperate need to, for us to create jobs in some shape or form. Uh, be it as entrepreneurs or as corporates. Um, so maybe some reflections on you know, what has happened you know, over the recent 18 months um, in the context of COVID and obviously there were those businesses that were also impacted and, uh, and I know, um, you know a lot of people here were impacted by the riots earlier this year. Um, so maybe some, some context around that. Hello, thanks uh, for the platform. Uh, afternoon everyone, are you guys okay? Yeah, I didn't hear any hashtags. Now from a young man, I represent one. So they all treat and they need to uh, know this information. Um, yeah, it's been a hectic 18 months, I think. Um, and that is why NYTA, for example, came up with the uh, impact of the Relief Fund, where we had to assist businesses that were impacted by COVID-19, especially during the level five. Uh, the lockdown, right? So that was very, very painful for us because uh, most businesses that we sponsor, especially the hospitality industry, were highly, highly uh, impacted, you know. But then there's an opportunity to also innovate, right? Um, we've seen the trend that also most of the businesses that we find, um, also the people that you spoke about survivalist businesses, so we're trying to get them from survivalist to actually sustainable businesses, which is a bit of a challenge, right? And uh, the other thing that has happened as well is we need to make sure that the young people understand other industries as well. So move away from your, there's nothing wrong with it, like your salons, your car washes and everything, get them into sort of the new opportunities, the futuristic sectors that are emerging in South Africa. You know, uh, you spoke about 4IR, for example, you know, the role of ICT, you see the impact of COVID-19 that people were working from home, so what is the role of young people in that sort of space, right? Uh, in manufacturing, um, we've seen um, our young people manufacturing masks, right? So all this PPE, for example, tenders, young people must have access to those things. So waste uh, collection is also um, agribusiness. So we need to sort of have a new way of thinking, I think, in terms of uh, young people and, and, and do our prior research and be innovative. So, yeah. It's been a, quite a bit of a challenge, and then we, after the relief uh, impact, uh, the riots also affected young people worse. Um, so we've been, uh, we've established a fund. Uh, also, if your business was impacted by the rioting, uh, where you can apply to us, and then we offer some sort of relief on that front. So COVID-19 hasn't been easy, and for us as NYDA, we 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 have a challenge also in terms of making sure that businesses in the rural areas don't get left behind, or young people in the rural areas don't get left behind. So the impact of COVID-19, uh, we've had issues of young people not accessing our um, branches, for example. So how then do we create an outreach program that makes sure that we get our vans to make sure that young people apply that side uh, to get access to information. So um, data issues around data has been contentious issue like how then can young people in rural areas access data? Because you might be something and you know, but thinking that other people have actual challenges out there. You know, I was in KZN, um, COVID young people have lost parents, so a lot of youth, there's a lot of youth here in household. So a person who had a business now has to take care of three of his siblings or her siblings. So there's a lot of youth here in household, especially in KZN. So how do we assist? Um, how do you offer support to uh, young people that have been affected? So for us, um, it's been also a learning curve, I think, 
you know, and uh, but also fulfilling because I'm a practitioner. You know, when we wake up in the morning, our purpose is to make sure that we serve young people, and now even you know, COVID has tripled that eager ahead to make sure that young people. NYDA will be hosting various webinars that will cover topics from education to employment to entrepreneurship to keep you up to date with the recent trends and developments so that you're aware and that you have information that can contribute meaningfully to your life. Oh, excellent. Well, thank you for that. And I mean, the, not the, the biggest challenge uh, that we've seen, um, I think that's a big fund that extended to banks as well, right? With the guarantee loan scheme. Um, and unfortunately, what we've seen in the reality is that you know, our black businesses, our black business owners, have been struggling the most. Um, more so the youth, um, even more so. And, and the reason for this is it's actually quite simple. Um, it's the track records from a funding perspective, right? So what the bank wants to see, they want to see three years bank statements and positive cash flows. Um, the truth of the matter is people do not have it, um, right? That's one. Two, the other thing was around compliance. Now, I think it's an important topic uh, when you deal with compliance because I think entrepreneurs across all sectors struggle with this notion. So tax compliance, um, so now that already becomes an issue in with um, the government institution like NYPA. C12 uh, for that matter. Um, and then there's compliance with CIPC by your books in order, because that will impact even the banks, right? Um, and then lastly, with your well, SARS as well, that credit scores. So, so that's a huge one as well around you know, credit profiling, um, because that's the first flag the bank sees. Um, how, do you, how do you manage around that? And, and maybe what, what type of interventions or solutions are there that can help people around it, uh, that are maybe available in the energy around? No, um, good question. I think from the clip that played before we came uh, here, um, the lady did indicate on her YouTube channel, that is why training, business training is important. So at NYDA, what we do is, if you don't have business training module, then we offer the training. Because we actually have realized that it's, it's, it's not worth it just to give an entrepreneur money on the ground and then let them go to the sky. But, uh, you know, uh, they don't, there's no return on investment. So what is important is the training aspect. And that is why I think we play a more critical role unlike other uh, finance uh, institutions. We offer young people training uh, for a week to, to make sure that the books are in order, to make sure that we assist them with their business plans, we assist them with their marketing. And the books thing is very, very important. And I think just to offer a bit from your question is a lot of people, for example, they fund their businesses through their own personal money, right? But they don't have records. They don't establish businesses. So whatever you spend, even the coffee that you spend, if you spend it, um, it must reflect on your business um, account. So that whenever time you need to apply, or any other credit through a bank, there's actually a record. So people just spend their own personal income mix with business and so forth. So it creates a very, a very muddy uh, approach to your business. So it's very, very important that young people, we keep records in terms of our businesses. And it's also a challenge within us as a way. Even when we fund uh, this uh, small business, when we ask uh, for, 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 for their books and stuff, you see that a person has spent towards an equipment but from their own pockets so we do not see um, through the business, registered business that you need to open a business account so that you keep record. When somebody says, yes I can find you but what have you done in the last two years? Then you realize after two years you've been spending money from your private um, bank account, right? So it's very, very, very important to make sure that we, we assist young people with records. So that is where I think NYT plays a very, very crucial role. Actually, for me, I think the business uh, module is more of a need than the actual funding because we realize that we just give a person funding. If they don't know how to use the funding, if you don't guide them how um, they should actually uh, apply the funding well into their business, their business are likely to, to fail. And that is why I even said before um, during my clip that 
funding on its own must be the least of your worries. If you have something to sell, if, if, if there's a need for your service, it will automatically fall into place. There will be a market for it, if, if there's a need for it. So that is why I say the funding, it's the sort of least, I know it's, it's, a, it's, it's a challenge for everyone, but it's, 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 it comes after you've done your research, other, um, research, making sure that your product is in a niche sort of market as well, right? And it's not a research related market. So it's very, very, very important to make sure that you do your background research as well. And um, also in my day, we have partnerships with the institutions we've mentioned, right? So where we try to make sure that um, we create some sort of a non-stop shop where young people can come into our offices or our branches and we link them up with the institutions that we've mentioned. So that um, they don't go from pillar to post, they know what is needed. Especially if they are applying for a grant, we ask them for the things that you mentioned. So we assist them in a way. So we guide them. If, 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 if you've done the program of business watching, then when you apply eventually, you already know what is needed. That is why, for example, the relief fund, we can assist them quicker because they can bring bank statements for already for, for that year, right? for the last two years. So for us, it's, it's, it's a bit easier to deal with us than other institutions uh, that don't offer the same sort of funding approach. I think very important points where, I mean, in, in my time as an entrepreneur myself, um, I also engage with entrepreneurs all the time. Uh, there's been different experiences, right? We have with institutions like yourselves, commercial banks, around getting that type of access and the understanding of the kind of funding that's required. Um, and this will be the last question I give to you before I, I, I give you a break. But, but I, think, I think sometimes the challenge is that funders, and this applies both private sector and public sector, um, don't truly understand entrepreneurs. So they, they tend to be a lacking in entrepreneurial funding. So what entrepreneurial funding, by that I mean, is um, there needs to be a larger risk appetite, right, to develop it. There needs to be a larger risk appetite how funding is done. So to give an example, um, so I do agricultural funding support for, for, for entrepreneurs, for emerging farmers. Now, I then learned through some of the developmental funding institutions in that sector, um, that they had non-performing loans. And some of the factors that impact this is the fact that, you know, in the farming space, a farmer will need 50 million rand, 10 million rand. But along the way, they need more money, right? And it's before they've made money. But they need more money because in that initial money is actually to get them to a point where they can attract more money. So in building together a value proposition, what I always tell entrepreneurs that how have you defined a value proposition? In some instances, it requires a whole lot of money to be spent um, before this value proposition is clear. Um, so for a farm to be attractive, I need to invest in the infrastructure. It's going to cost me a lot of money. You know, to get to ensure that there's water, irrigation, it's fencing, there's some equipment long before the farming has started. Um, and then you still need to sow, you still need to but in some crops, it takes some time before you start to harvest. So before I see a return, money has been spent. In the energy space, the same thing. You need to do environmental impact assessments. That costs a lot of money. So it becomes a problem in raising that kind of capital. Um, uh, raising that kind of capital um, without a track record. It becomes a problem in raising that kind of capital without security. Right? Um, in some instances, it's okay, where's your asset that you can leverage? Okay, look, that's all I've got. I've got my cell phone contract. <laughs> you know, so, <clears throat> so what else can one bring to the table? Now, in your defense, and I'll, I'll, I, I do know quite a lot about the NYDA. The NYDA uh, is not there to solve all funding needs. Um, I think they, they play a very, very important uh, role in terms of the funding ecosystem. Um, I think the funding cap is 250,000. Uh, it's grant funding. I think it's the only available grant funding that's quite easy to access for young people. Um, 
And I think this is where the great opportunity to start developing your businesses through that funding mechanism that the NRD has. Um, but I think given the role that you play, you guys need to spend more money. Um, you know? Um, in, 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 in those ways. So the question, given the background, was um, you know what is the entrepreneurial approach? I mean, do you, do you actually understand the entrepreneur's needs as being there in any form of engagement? I think, you know, some people have gotten funding quite, quite well with NIDA. A lot of people are saying, sure, it's actually quite difficult. It's, it's not a great take. Can you maybe take us through that and, and uh, yeah, how, how, they, how you maybe solve it? Okay. Well, thanks. Um, very good question. So, for example, I head up the research and policy innovation department, right? And one of the key things that we have done or tried to do is to make sure we carry out, uh, for example, surveys to our uh, constituents, right? So, for example, if you speak about agriculture, we did a survey on agriculture for young people and why we don't see enough young black people penetrating the agricultural space. And yes, some of it is it's, it's deep rooted in historical uh, backgrounds, but for example, what came out is that young people don't find, for example, agriculture sort of sexy. That's, you know, because it's, everybody wants to be in a suit and jacket and be in, in, in something, for example. Right? So we carry out surveys, quarterly surveys, especially to NTPS, to understand actually what are the challenges they're having, uh, how can we assist them, or how can we enhance our services more. That is why we now, um, recently, quite recently, last month, as recent as last month, we came up with an ERP platform where young people don't necessarily need to go to a branch anymore. They can just go online, they'll get their profile assessed uh, to see if they can actually qualify for the funding. So you don't have to now go physically to the office, you just click into our ERP system. And then um, we assess you, your profile, and then when you qualify, we then um, can, you can apply for a grant. But the other thing is, um, like you mentioned, NYDA, our role is we deal with uh, small businesses, very, very small businesses. Once uh, we've guided you through, held your hand, we've funded you, now when you want to scale up, you now have to knock on the doors of your CFAs, your seniors, because you would have sort of graduated in a way, right? So you have to think of it as a more like um, a graph where basically you have to go from NYDA, when you fund you, when you scale up, you go to CIFA, and after CIFA you go to IDC and NEF, you know. Then also another thing that we assist young people is to make sure that we networks, you know, um, through events like these, for example, because that's the whole ecosystem approach, right? And young people, what, the reason uh, people who are rich or are old is because you spend time um, gradually uh, making networks, but for us, as young black people now, the opportunity is within us to network quicker, right? To make sure that we exchange business cards, to make sure that we assist each other, because you might need a business that I'm not good at, or you might need something that he's good at, maybe another guy's an IT specialist, or he needs, um, I need a website for my new business, so we exchange uh, contact details as well. So that is very, very important to make sure that networking is, is, is one of the most crucial elements of it. And background research. You need, I, I cannot emphasize this enough, you need to make sure you research the industry that you want to get into. And mentorships, I haven't spoken about the issue of mentorships, which is very, very important. Whatever industry that you want to get into, make sure there's a mentor who can assist you. If there's a, if a person you know that has done something, if, if DJ Boo has done his energy drink and you want to go into the beverage space, you ask him or he can be a mentor for them, right? to, 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 to guide you through the challenges or the hopes that you might face during your, your journey of entrepreneurship. And we tend to be entrepreneurship is a lonely space, I think, right? So you need more support as much as possible. If you know people that have done it well, they might not be also in your industry, but make sure that you get mentors, a mentor who will guide you, make sure you attend events that are in the scope of what you get, do, what you want to invest your business. So I think those have been the challenges of young people, that, especially in the townships. Right? How do we get the young person from the township exposed to such a platform like this today, for example? A person in the rural areas who want to get into a specific space. So how then do we put them um, along in terms of um, this kind of change? So, yeah. No, that was, that was 
Thank, thank you for that answer. I think you touched on um, two very important points for me. I think, one, the networking. Um, it's actually a very important element. You know, we tend to think that our answers are keys to opportunities when we lie on the panel. Um, and sometimes when we lie on the audience. Um, I think there's a great opportunity, especially to be part of why this event was created around connected with people. Um, you actually never know the answer might be sitting right next to you. Imagine when you go up to somebody that they're a bank account. And if you went up to a bank account that you've never made a deposit in and you asked for a withdrawal, most likely they're gonna look at you crazy and security's yep. gonna come and kick you out. Because yep. how could you ever ask for a withdrawal from an account you've never made a deposit in? Great analogy. And so look at relationships and networking as bank accounts. If you've never made a deposit, how could you ever ask for a withdrawal? Has equated to about a loss of about 59.1 billion to our GDP. And if you look at it, that's almost 1% of our total GDP. And uh, if you um, look at just in terms of job losses, uh, there's about, the study also shows that there's about 200,000 jobs that have been lost as a result of COVID 19 throughout the village. Um, and I mean, 200,000 jobs, if you look at it also in the biggest scheme of things, is literally 1.2% of our formal and informal employment sector. So, um, COVID 19 has really impacted the, the liquor industry. However, um, you know, as you said, the leader in, 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 in as far as uh, the liquor industry is concerned, we've been doing quite a lot as well, um, uh, apart from trying to survive at the same time. Uh, uh, we've, we've literally donated quite a huge amount of, of investment to our value chain, uh, just to assist them, uh, because there's a lot of businesses that were really suffering. Um, and I mean, even in the recent riots that have happened, we, we managed to just put aside about seven, seven million that we can give to all of the, because if, if you remember when the riots were happening, we were right in the middle of a ban. And for some reason, liquor became a very important commodity or an opportunity to go and, and loot, you know? Uh, our breweries were looted as well. Um, it, was, it was just, uh, an insane period at that time. We lost quite a lot. But nonetheless, we are even now um, you know, working in a process of helping all of the taverns that we looted in terms of infrastructure, in terms of getting them you know, the necessary assistance that is required. Now, going into uh, maybe if I had to speak about some of the, the efforts that the organization does in as far as SMME development is concerned is that firstly from a from a value chain perspective beer is quite huge um, and very important in the economy from agriculture all the way to uh, the people that sell the bottles and all of that now in SAB what we try to do is support SMME um, and enterprise development as much as possible and uh, for instance, one way in South Africa is that um, more than 95% of our raw materials is locally sourced. Right? So we try and make sure that our raw materials are sourced. Uh, and, and I mean, beer, beer raw materials are quite difficult, specifically hops. Um, you, we only can get it in the Western Cape. Right? Um, but we try by all means to source locally. And I mean, we've got about 3,700 suppliers on our database um, that we work with. And I mean, out of that number, about 1.9 are uh, SMMEs. And they support about 140,000 uh, livelihoods. So there's quite a huge amount of uh, support that comes from this particular industry. Now, if I had to get into agriculture, for instance, um, we source from about 2,700 uh, producers uh, locally. Right? 
757 of them are emerging farmers that require full-on support uh, in order to make sure that they are sustainable. So there's a lot that you have to plow in if you're if you actually trying to drive the right narrative. Um, and I mean, in, in, in as far as agriculture is concerned, um, you know, like you said, so from your experiences, it's it's a very high capex uh, uh, industry. In order to make it, you have to be buying, and you have to invest in a lot of capital requirements, and it's it's, it's, it's quite difficult for a small. Um, a small emerging farmer to actually make So essentially what we try to do is um, we try to basically build a solid pipeline of suppliers that are representative of the current demographic of the country. That's why we plow, we try and plow a lot into SMMEs, uh, like black owned and women led SMMEs. Oh, that's fantastic. And I, I appreciate that context. I think, uh, obviously, uh, SAP has a huge role to play in agriculture. In fact, I was in the Western Cape recently, the Garden Route. Um, and unfortunately, you know, when I look at regions like the Western Cape, uh, from a farming and agricultural perspective, um, it, it is quite difficult to see you know, the role in which black farmers play. Uh, being to be part of your value chain. Uh, considering that you know, for commercial scale requires a lot of funding and lots of support. So if I'm an emerging farmer, what type of support can is there? And I mean, you know, is there a true drive around you know, identifying or um, farmers or otherwise other businesses in your value chain? And obviously value chain is, is not just the farming, farming is a primary aspect of it. Um, are there other opportunities for entrepreneurs within your value chain? Are there support programs that exist within the SAP framework that an entrepreneur you know, can be looking at opportunities and say, well, look, maybe I can supply something to the SAP framework? What are the opportunities there? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. Um, so, definitely, there's a lot of opportunities. Quite, quite, quite a lot of opportunities, and I think the main issue is is the information uh, to get those, those opportunities. And so, if I had to give a couple of um, examples with our um, SAB Foundation, right, we've got um, the Tolana Fund, right, and the Tolana Fund is basically a fund that seeks to empower women, uh, but not exclusively to women, um, uh, black people, and mainly people in the rural areas. How it works is that it basically look at uh, the businesses that you have, and, and, and it's, it's, it's a simple application process on our, on our websites. But you basically look at the, the businesses that you, that you have. Um, look at how we can assist you from scaling, and we take you on a two-year process. Right? So we, we understand the importance of not just uh, putting in seed funding, but you need to actually work, work with that entrepreneur um, as much as possible, um, and as far as development is concerned. So we take it through a two-year process where we've got business coaches, um, we've got infrastructure support, um, basically look at what is it that you actually need because in some instances entrepreneurs will say that what I need for my business is funding guys I figured it out I know what I want my new job to be I'm going to be an entrepreneur a what? you know an entrepreneur you get to be your own boss, make a lot of money, tell other people what to do. Oh, you mean an entrepreneur. Actually, there's a lot more to being an entrepreneur than being your own boss and making a lot of money, Bob. An entrepreneur is someone who effectively identifies a need within society and develops a way to serve that need as effectively as possible. 
As per usual, you have made this significantly less fun for me. Fun might be the wrong word, but entrepreneurship certainly isn't boring. Immense risk-taking combined with a dependence on creative thinking and near total freedom makes being an entrepreneur exhilarating. Uh-huh, and what about the part where you get a lot of money? Actually, there's no guarantee that any entrepreneur will make any money. But if they have found a way to properly serve society's needs, their venture will be successful, and they'll be able to earn a living with their business. After all, without the motivation of reward, a lot fewer people would make the effort or take the risk. So, if I were an entrepreneur, I could have a bunch of people doing my work and just keep all of the money they make for me? Not at all. Employees help create value for business and thus for the entrepreneur. And they're paid for what they do based on an arrangement both parties agreed to before any work was done. Entrepreneurs are usually going to get a bigger paycheck than their workers, true, but that's only because they took the bigger risk. The reality is, entrepreneurs risk a lot to develop products and services that will improve the lives of others. And they often have to spend years working 60 to 80 hour weeks without ever making a penny. In fact, the average small business takes two to three years to turn a profit, assuming they aren't like the more than half of all startups that tank in the first four years, leaving the entrepreneur with nothing but a failed dream and a bunch of debt. And remember, the employees know they're getting a paycheck. The entrepreneur doesn't. So you're telling me that these entrepreneur suckers spend years of their lives investing their time and energy into developing crazy ideas on the off chance that they might just make something that I want to buy? Like your butt implants. It's getting old! Yep, a lot of entrepreneurs take risks and work hard because they love what they do. But earning a living is a good motivator too. No system is perfect, but a society which is friendly to entrepreneurship is a society which rewards those who serve the needs of others. And in some instances, it's not necessarily funding. It might be networks, access to market, or different ways in which to do certain things. But funding is very important. So, you know, we've got um, um, these business coaches that assist you in that regard. Um, and they also play the role of a mentor as well, connect you or whatever the case may be. Then we've also got uh, rural development programs, right? And this is where now uh, we, we looked at the national development plan, and there's a lot of, uh, not to sound too negative, but there's a lot of gaps as well in as far as rural development is concerned. And that's why we believe that it might be a sector that is not specifically targeted efficiently, but we're trying to target it and bring it forth. Because like you said uh, earlier on, that, that, that women have been running businesses for quite some time. If we go to the rural development areas, a lot of these co-ops are run by women. Um, a lot of them started off as survival businesses, but there's a lot of skills as well in that regard. So what we do there is uh, we basically help them in as far as development is concerned. Um, and we actually try and go out and look for them. These co-ops, uh, maybe it would be farming, but there's other uh, industries that they work in, such as textiles and whatever the case may be. And then we basically give them the necessary skills uh, to, to actually run their businesses and grow their businesses. Right? And then we've, we've also got um, you know, the Thrive uh, the Thrive Fund that we have, and we've invested literally about 200 million in it, and it just purely goes into supply development and enterprise development. Um, and I mean, through this fund, for instance, we've managed to have our first uh, female black hop farm um, in the in the Western Cape. Um, and like I said, you can't grow hops are very; they need a certain region to grow them. You can't just go them anywhere. In Africa, it's literally the best it can um, And I mean, that, that, that is one of the good stories that we get to tell every day um, in terms of whatever we do for the communities. No, no, that's fantastic. I think that's a very important observation I'm seeing is the need for collaboration, right, with the private sector and public sector. Um, you mentioned Rural, rural development is, is quite important, and I agree with you, there are a lot of gaps. 
Um, I think what's very important as well, what's very important as well is, sorry. There we go. Right? Yeah, what really, what's very really important as well is the role of certain sectors. Right? So, large sectors like mining, the brewery space, uh, exist predominantly in the rural development or in areas of, of, of rural development needs. So, obviously, you've got sector charters that are driving um, you know, corporate and social development in the space. You've got, um, I mean, in the mining charter, there's a lead effect that was driven out of the uh, through the charters um, around community development. Um, and you know, what's sad is that you know, we're needing pieces of paper and legislation to enforce it. Um, it is refreshing to hear and see, and I do know quite a lot about the role that ABM has done in the space. Um, I think there's been a billion rand invested over the past five years um, uh, that has actually been spent. Um, effectively uh, in those type of, of, of spaces. And uh, I think a number of the minds are doing the same, but some of them are literally doing it as a box ticket exercise, uh, where you still find that the minds or the, the, the corporate or the corporations are making billions and the community is still getting poorer and poorer and poorer. Um, which is telling me that from a social economic development perspective, there's something unsustainable around it. Uh, you may have heard I know I'm part of these committees, and I know NYDA is as well. Um, like the Gauteng province is establishing a model around combating economic development. Uh, and there'll be various workshops in part across the sectors uh, to now say, as private sector, public sector, we actually need to act now. Right? So, so then, therefore, it's really important how the corporates come together and kind of say, okay, we're going to contribute uh, this amount of resources. Uh, we're going to open up certain opportunities, as you've already done, uh, but there needs to be some more active support, particularly in this province, uh, around it. Uh, because ultimately, you know, when we talk about, let's say, farming, uh, farming is just the primary route to the beginning of a long story. That